first story. The saga of OP, who invited her mother, who cheated on OP's father, and abandoned her to her wedding. So father said he would not come if her mother was invited. And OP's response was to suck it up or do whatever you please. I am a long-time lurker, but a first-time poster. I never thought I would be posting to Reddit. But here we are. Quick side note. I know my fiancé and I are very young. But we have been together for years and were friends since childhood before we became a couple. I hate to say it, but we are religious. And it's common in our culture to marry young. We've been through both premarital and financial counseling. So we feel very prepared. Anyway, my issue at hand has to do with the wedding. My fiancé, Steve, and I are getting married in eight months. We don't have a lot of money, and honestly, neither of us can stand fancy dues. So we are having a very private ceremony with only his best man and my maid of honor as witnesses. And then we are having a tiny reception afterwards with only 50 people total. So obviously, this is going to be quite an intimate reception. Here is the thing. My parents can't really stand each other. Or at least my dad can't stand my mom. Five years ago, in my last year of high school, my mother was caught having an affair with her married co-worker. It destroyed my parents' marriage. My father became a changed man. He was always a happy and confident outgoing guy. But he became quiet, withdrawn, and just empty. It's killed me to see him like this. My mother moved out because me and my younger brother, who was 15 at the time, basically told her to GTFO. I have always been close with my mom and loved her to pieces. But finding out about her affair, and seeing what it did to my dad, I've always known my dad to adore my mother nuked my relationship with her. My brother, and I had no contact with her for about a year. I finally relented when I sent her an invitation to my high school graduation. But I made it clear her partner was not invited. My brother took a little longer to come around. But he talks to her from time to time. Both of us told the judge we wanted to live with our dad full time, which was granted to us. My relationship with my mother is still strained and distant. I know she wants more. She's constantly trying to talk to me. And she sobbed in relief when I sent her my graduation invitation after not talking to her for almost a year. But I keep her at arm's length and merely make polite casual conversation now and again. I still love my mother, and I don't want to cut her out completely. But this is as close as I want her to be, and I will never again have a close relationship with her. As for her affair partner apparently, they are still together after his wife caught and divorced him. I have never met him, and have made it clear to my mother that I do not want to. If mom and I meet for coffee or anywhere he is not to come, I refuse to see pictures or discuss him with her. If she brings him up, I immediately change the subject. I have no idea if my mom is happy with him, if they are doing well, etc. I frankly don't care. As for my father, in a way we are closer. But he clearly has his issues. It's been five years, and he's clearly not over the cheating and divorce. He's not angry or bitter about it. He's just very sad and depressed. He won't call my mom or her lover by their names. He calls them he him and she her. He hasn't dated once since the divorce either. He won't be around her. For my graduation, they had to be at the polar opposite ends of the bleachers. And I had to have my phone on me, so I could text my mom when she was allowed to approach and congratulate me. And then so I could text my dad to let him know my mom left. It will be this way when I graduate college as well. So, my question goes to my wedding. After I told my dad what Steve and I had planned for our wedding and reception, he got very quiet and asked if I planned on inviting her and him. I said yes. I would probably invite my mom, even though her partner is not invited. My dad quietly said it's rude to only invite one half of a couple. He then said he didn't think he could come if she was going to be there. Maybe he could be there before or after she comes, but he just doesn't think he could interact with her in such a close setting. I was floored and very hurt. I told my dad I would think about it. Steve and I need to start sending out save the dates pretty soon. So we need to get this resolved. I've talked about this with Steve, and while he is very sweet, and says he will fully support me no matter what decision I make, I'm the only one who can make this choice. I also talked to my brother about it, and he says he will show up no matter what. But he won't have much to do with our mother, if she's invited beyond basic courtesies, and that he understands dad's position, but thinks he's being kind of ridiculous. He also said technically it's rude to not invite her boyfriend. But it's also pretty rude to destroy two families by having an affair with another married man so her boyfriend can go f himself and mother can shove wedding etiquette up her arse. Personally, he'd prefer I not invite her either. But it's my wedding, and I can do what I want. And he will roll with it my brother is a very blunt man, and has not been as forgiving of the affair as I have. So now I'm stuck. 
On the one hand, if we are being honest, I really do want to invite my mother to my wedding reception. I absolutely will not invite her boyfriend, regardless of how tacky it seems. He is not, and will never be a part of our family. And honestly, I'm kind of angry with my dad. Believe me, I understand his pain and hurt. But it's been five years, and I think he needs to start moving on. It's fine if he doesn't like mom. I don't much like her either. But to boycott my own wedding because she might be coming. Get over yourself. It's like his hurt feelings are more important than his only daughter's wedding. He really can't suck it up and just be in a reception hall with her for a few hours. On the other hand, I really love my dad. I hate seeing him hurt. I can't stand causing him pain. If I absolutely have to choose between my two parents, I will pick my father every time. Despite him being kind of a wet blanket about the wedding, he's a good man with a good heart. My dad and I are very close, and I don't want to jeopardize my relationship with him. I would much rather have him at my wedding than my mother. Plus, I'm thinking that since I refuse to invite my mom's boyfriend, and it really is considered a wedding faux pas, I just shouldn't invite her altogether. I really don't want my dad to not come. But, despite how my mom and I are not, and will never be close again, and how I think she's getting her just desserts for having an affair, I don't want to hurt her by not inviting her altogether. I'm well and truly stuck. I don't know what to do, and honestly, I've broken down crying over this a few times because it's just so stressful, and I feel caught in the middle between two people I love. Please help Reddit. TLDR. Mom had an affair five years ago, and her parents divorced. Mom and I have somewhat reconciled, but we aren't very close. I am getting married. My dad is not angry, but he told me he doesn't think he can come to my tiny reception if my mom will be there. I want to invite both my parents but feel torn. My mother's lover is not invited, regardless of her decisions. Relevant comments. She was actually a pretty great mom until the affair. But it could be she's an arsehole and a good mother. I went to my own personal therapy during and after the divorce, and reflecting back on it, I found that my dad was always very good to my mom, showed her lots of affection, gave praise, helped her when she was sick, would spontaneously buy her flowers and other presents, etc. But my mom never really reciprocated. It's always been obvious to me that my dad adored my mom. But thinking back, I wasn't ever sure she loved him because she certainly never showed it. My therapist also pointed out that people can be good parents, but also terrible partners and or people outside of that role. And that honestly helped me come to terms with getting over the affair between reconciling the mother I knew, who I loved and was close with, and this selfish person who did a terrible thing to our family. I really think she is one of those people my therapist described good parent, bad partner, and or person, and that the two aren't mutually exclusive or inclusive. Update. Hi everyone. Sorry I took so long to post, but I got very busy, part of which was spent graduating college, so I'm glad that's finally out of the way. Warning. This is a very long update. Also, this post is probably going to get flamed. Judging how the comments went down as more time went on, and my post was up. This is probably going to anger many people. But there were also lots of nice and helpful people too. Especially your member Coombe Valley. So I was reading all the comments, and the more time went on, the more angry and upset I became. People eventually started saying, why should parents always have to sacrifice for children? Some said I was being a bridezilla and only caring about my day of course I care. It's my wedding. It's supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime event that I want to share with everyone. Many people said my dad had depression and my mother's actions were so evil that he was forever off the hook for good. Everyone was giving suggestions on how I could meticulously plan the days to rotate everyone, and I felt like screaming. Steve eventually told me to get off of Reddit because he hated seeing me so upset. I couldn't even say exactly why I was upset. I just was. Steve said maybe I should go back to my old therapist that I had when my parents got divorced and talk it out with her. To me, this seemed like a great idea. I called her up and asked to have an appointment, despite finals being right around the corner. So I went, and everything came out. How much I still hurt from what mom did, and how we can never be close again. And honestly, how angry I am at my father. I never really realized it, but I've gotten so furious and resentful of him. How he never even tried to get out of his funk. How dejected he acted if mom somehow came up. How he never said anything directly bad about her, but subtly made me feel so guilty for loving her acting mopey, going from fine to depressed if she somehow came up, how I always feel like I have to walk on eggshells around him, and how he gets a free pass because he got cheated on something that happens to tons of people every day. I talked and talked and talked. I made a couple more appointments. 
I got through the finals. I want to shout out to Steve here. He is the only reason I got through it all, passed, and got my degree. He is an incredible human being. The tipping point was my graduation day. Once again, my father made it clear mom couldn't sit near him, and he couldn't be near her at all. I had to text her when she could come talk to me, and I had to text him once she left. Her boyfriend was, of course, not invited. But it was so embarrassing to have to contact the officials in charge of the ceremony and ask if my tickets could be changed so my parents could sit far away from each other. They were kind and understanding, but that's when I began to get very, very angry. My mom has no problem with my dad. She doesn't mind being near him, even though she doesn't love him. I began to think about how I'm going to have to rearrange all my milestones. My marriage, when I have children, my children's christenings and birthday parties, etc. Graduation was miserable. I couldn't look in any one direction to see my family as I got my degree and walked the stage because they had to be spread out. I had to make sure my phone was on me and fully charged so I could coordinate my mother and father's locations. It was so awkward mingling with one group, and then my mother, knowing both groups were waiting to have their turn. My brother interacted with my mother, and he was kind of cold but cordial nonetheless. My mother made no complaints, didn't try to argue or force herself in there, and patiently waited for her turn, even though I could tell she was dying to spend more time with me. Pictures had to be rotated. I couldn't have won with all my family in there. My father was constantly texting during my time with her, asking if she had left yet and if he could come back now. It seemed so childish. Honestly, the rest of my family could tolerate my mother being around. After all, the divorce was years ago. It's time to start getting over it and moving on with life. It was only because of my dad that I couldn't relax and just be happy and enjoy my graduation with my family. I was supposed to go to dinner with my dad, boyfriend, and other family members after graduation to celebrate. I told them I felt very sick and I needed to go home. I just didn't want to be around anyone anymore. Steve just held me while I bawled my eyes out. I hadn't cried that hard in years. I met with my therapist a couple more times. This is turning into a novel, so I will summarize what I came to realize in therapy. While the initial anger and hate I felt for my mom was real, I never stopped loving her. But I felt like, because my dad had been wronged, I had to take his side. My dad has always made me feel guilty for loving my mother. While his actions have never been overt, they have been very subtle manipulations. I felt like I had to give my dad carte blanche for whatever he wanted, because if I didn't, I felt like I would lose him too. He would reject me and have nothing to do with me if I didn't practically ostracize my mother. My mother was, at one point, my best friend, and that's gone. I couldn't stand losing both my parents, so dad has gotten whatever he wants. And I'm realizing that, in a subtle way. Dad has been manipulating my brother and me to treat our mother terribly for years to punish her. My dad has always been a super passive, aggressive guy. It's nothing new. He's always guilt-tripped people and made these little comments that twist people up and hurt them. It's his form of control. I love both my parents. My mother did a terrible, horrible thing. But my dad is no saint either. My mom was just more upfront about her awfulness. My therapist and Steve also pointed out that if my dad is truly depressed, emotionally damaged, etc. He has never sought to get help for it. Instead, he has projected his problems and pain onto everyone else and made it their burden instead of taking responsibility for himself and attempting to go on with life. And that is not okay. I called my mom and asked her over for tea. Steve left to give us privacy. I could list everything we said and talked about, but it would make the post longer. Basically, my mom never loved my dad and should never have agreed to marry him. My dad knew mom didn't love him but didn't care and insisted she would love him eventually. Some very eye-opening things were said that made sense. My mother never trash-talked my dad never has, but she gave insights as to why the affair happened. She says she understands there's no excuse for what she did, and she is so very sorry for her own selfishness and weakness. Basically, both my parents are humans, and mistakes were made on both sides. My mom had the affair, yes, but it's not like my dad was the perfect man either. While I will never again be close to my mom, perhaps I don't need to be quite as harsh with her as I have been. We will still be in low contact, but I have decided I do want her there for the wedding and for the birth of any children I have, etc. I love my mom. Always have and always will. She may not have been a good wife, but she was an excellent mother, and I don't want to cut her out completely. I think my kids' lives will be more enriched having her in them. My mother started crying when I told her she was invited to the wedding even though I made it clear to her that her boyfriend was not invited. 
She didn't argue with me on that at all, and said she thought I had asked her to my house to tell her I would not be inviting her, and she had been prepared to accept that rejection and understand it. I did tell her that if dad was there, she was to stay away from him and not try to mend any fences at my wedding. She says she understands completely and will mingle with my grandparents, her parents, and my aunts, uncles, and cousins, her siblings, and their children. I made it clear to my mother that if she even attempted to talk to dad or any of his family, she would be thrown out. She agreed without question. Steve and I had a final sit down before I called my dad. I asked him to please give me his honest opinion. Steve relented and said that, while he thought my mother had done the inexcusable, she actually seemed remorseful and willing to accept the consequences of her actions and to move on, and that my dad, while a nice guy, came off as way too sensitive and just weak. He said that my dad didn't cheat, but he had caused me a lot of pain and anxiety since the divorce, and it made him very angry. It was getting hard to like or tolerate my dad, and his family felt the same way that my dad was actually a master bully in disguise, as a super nice guy. I called my dad and asked him to come over, saying that I needed to talk about something. I sat him down in his living room, so this talk was in his space where he could retreat if he needed to and said basically, Dad, I love you so much. You mean the world to me. But after the fiasco of my graduation, I've come to realize I have had enough of feeling like I have to pick sides for you and mom. I'm sorry for what happened, Dad. I really am. But that was five years ago. You lost a wife. But I didn't lose a mom. I'm sure you don't mean to but you've been making me feel like I can't be close with you if I want to have any kind of relationship with mom. If it's still impossible to even be in the room with her dad, then maybe you need to talk to someone so you can start feeling better and not be in so much pain. Is there some kind of abuse that happened that you're not telling me about that makes this impossible? My dad seemed shocked and then started to get really upset and basically said mom had never hit him or anything, but that she cheated and broke his heart and that was reason enough to cut her out. Dad also said, I couldn't understand because I hadn't been cheated on. I didn't know what real love was. And he also implied it was my fault and my brother's fault because, if we weren't a part of their relationship, he could move on. But we always remind him of her and what they had. How because of us he can't make a clean break since she's in our lives, etc. I'm sure many Redditors will disagree. But this is my dad being typically passive. Insinuating that because my brother and I exist, he can't get better because we are reminders of mother and it's our fault we exist, so he can't cut her out totally. I realize that my dad thinks that if he can get me and my brother to cut my mom out, not only will he succeed in punishing her, but he can have us all to himself and not have to share with her and deal with his hurt. He's getting us to do the dirty work for him, so he doesn't have to take responsibility. I told my dad that I loved him and wanted him at the wedding, but mother was invited. Her boyfriend isn't, but she is. I told dad that I had talked to her, and I promised him she would leave him alone and stay away from him and his family. Could he not just put aside differences for a few hours to celebrate with me and Steve on our day? He said absolutely not, that I was being unfair and insensitive, and that my mom had poisoned me against him. That he wasn't the cheat, and she needed to deal with what she had done and not come, and by inviting her, I was clearly supporting her cheating, and that we couldn't be close if that was the case because I was being too much like her. I had had enough. I stood up and said, Dad, Steve, and I really want you there. You are free to come or not. I love you. But if you don't come, it will absolutely affect our relationship going forward. I am not doing any more separate celebrations or events. People can either come or stay home for weddings, parties, births, and whatever. It's getting ridiculous, and I'm sick of being in the middle. The rest is up to you and mom. Then I left. I haven't heard from my dad since. That's been hard but I feel like I did the right thing. I also called my brother and told him everything that happened. My brother was very quiet. He then said, while he still hates our mom for what she did and thinks she's a W, that maybe there is more to this than he realized and that he thinks our dad is being a selfish jerk and needs to get over himself. He said it's fine that mom is coming to the wedding and that he would be nice to her. So that's that. I'm sure many will disagree and be angry with me, but Steve and I feel we made the right call. Steve loves and supports me, and that's all that matters. I talked to my therapist about it, and she said it's possible I was harsh, but maybe my dad needed to hear that since he has been coddled and enabled for five years. I am fully prepared for my dad to not show up. If he doesn't, it's his loss. Thanks again to everyone who gave me input. Some of your comments were very eye-opening. I may post an update in the future after the wedding, but I haven't decided yet. TLDR, I broke down and went to therapy. 
I realized my dad is very passive, aggressive, and manipulative. My graduation day was horrible, but it was a catalyst to realize things can't continue this way, and I'm tired of being in the middle. I had a heart-to-heart -heart with mom and realized my parents' relationship is not a case of saint versus sinner, but two people who are human and made mistakes. I told mom she's invited, but her boyfriend is not and she will be asked to leave if she approaches my dad or any of his family. I talked to my dad and told him he's hurting me with his behavior and it needs to stop. My dad is not speaking to me, and there's a good chance he will boycott the wedding. I talked to my brother, and he supports me and says dad is being unfair. I'm just happy I get to marry Steve and that I don't have to be stuck in bullshit drama anymore. Edit. Wow, this blew up. Thank you to everyone who commented and offered a POV except for the people sending PM's death threats. I've gotten at least half a dozen of those, plus calling me a W-ironic since I'm a virgin and hoping Steve cheats. You sound like lovely, warm people full of happiness. I wanted to point out some things that keep coming up. Remember, I come from a religion and culture that are very different from most people here. Divorce is shameful for us. It is humiliating. The only justifiable reason for divorce is an affair for our people. Divorce, because you're not happy, is not an excusable reason. An affair is the only way out. However, that being said, the person who commits the affair has just crippled themselves. SX is very holy and pure in our religion and culture. It is to be between husband and wife only. That's it. And if you break up a marriage because of it, you are forever blacklisted. While my mother could or should have gotten a divorce without having an affair, she still would have had a scarlet letter on her chest for getting divorced for no reason, which is an ultimate act of selfishness. Marriage is very holy in our culture. To divorce for any reason other than an affair is to be like an unbelieving sinner, which is quite simply not acceptable. I don't necessarily agree with this, as I'm a little more liberal than the rest of my family and most people, but it is what it is. My mother did not get scot-free. She is no longer welcome in her church, and none of her friends associate with her anymore. Her family, her friends, her church, and her entire community have shunned her. She also lost her job because dipping your pen in company ink was expressly frowned upon at her former workplace. Both she and her lover lost their jobs and had to find new ones. Many are saying, I need to start including my mom's partner in things, and the fact that she has been with him this whole time shows they have something special. It actually does not. I didn't put this in my post, but my mom and I actually talked about her boyfriend for the first time. They are on the verge of breaking up, and their relationship has been rocky for a while. P's family and friends have disowned him too. He is not of our religion or culture double bogus for my mom for taking a lover outside the faith. But no one wants anything to do with P. His ex-wife has made their lives hell and will not let him see his kids. When he does see them, they treat my mother terribly and make their hatred known. P is also sick of not being invited to every family event on our side and says mom needs to start demanding he be invited to things. Mom is of the view that they brought misery on themselves and need to accept the consequences of their actions. She also knows that if she insisted on bringing P, she would burn the last of the bridges she has with us and will not do that. P is sick of her, not putting him first, and their relationship is falling apart because of it. The only reason they have lasted this long is because my mom and I only have each other because no one else wants them. And they both know it. My mom actually does love her boyfriend, but he does not love her anymore and she knows they aren't going to make it. Many are saying even explicitly hoping Steve cheats on me, so I understand my dad's pain, because I clearly don't since I haven't been cheated on hey. That's what my dad said. This experience has actually taught me the opposite. If Steve were to cheat, I would be out of my mind with pain and hurt. I wouldn't be able to function. I don't blame my dad for being unable to be around my mother. At first, if I had children with Steve, as much as it would suck, I would put on my big girl pants, and do what needed to be done for my kids. I've gotten plenty of comments and PMs from people who were cheated on, heartbroken, and devastated. And they did what needed to be done. Since I now know what it's like to have parents who pick their pain over their kids, I know I would never want to put my kids through that. It's just basic human decency. I am not on any parent's side. I don't love either of my parents more, nor do I think either should be demonized and bashed or put out on a pedestal and coddled. My parents are human and imperfect. They are both great people. And they both have done some really shtty things. That's it. And that's all. Second story. Entitled friend group invited OP as a guest for his twin birthday party. Saying his celebration was no big deal. So he ditched the party. But bothering his brother might feel bad. 
Would I be the arsey hole for not attending a surprise birthday dinner for my twin brother? So I'm a twin. My brother and I hang out all the time. And we are super close. In a few days, it will be our 25th birthday. We share the same friend group, and we're all really close and have been since school. He has a close group of girlfriends about five of them, whom I have also known for many years. I would classify them as being closer to him in recent years, but we are all still good friends and socialize often together. Now, I have been added to a group chat labeled, My Brother's Name Surprise Dinner. It is a surprise birthday dinner for my twin brother, organized by one of the girls in that group, and they have invited me as a guest. One of them also said in the group that it would be nice to see me as well, so I just feel like an afterthought. I wouldn't really have minded if the girls wanted to organize a surprise birthday evening exclusively for my brother and themselves, but they have also invited my partner and some of my brother's closest friends. This feels inconsiderate and quite upsetting, as I can't understand why I would be invited to my literal twin brother's surprise birthday dinner with me only invited as a guest, as it is also my birthday involving all of our friends. My girlfriend also found this action to be extremely rude and wondered why this girl didn't just reach out to her. And then they could have organized a surprise involving both of us instead, or have just involved both my brother and me, and left the surprise element out of it. In the chat, it is clearly stated that we are all to arrive at one time, while my brother is due to arrive 20 minutes later. The thought of attending makes me feel weird, because it's just a celebration for his birthday when he and I are literally born on the same day. This isn't new information to the organizer. Also, every year, my brother and I do something together because we want to and because we have the same friends. Last year, our friends and my girlfriend set up a massive dinner for our birthday, to which everyone was invited, including the girl group. So now I'm at a crossroads. I don't know whether or not to attend. On one hand, if I don't go, I will feel left out because our mutual friends are going. But on the other hand, if I do go, I will feel like I am letting myself be disrespected, and I will likely feel uncomfortable as it feels like only my brother is being celebrated. So, Wipta, if I took a stand and didn't go? Edit. My girlfriend has just checked the chat, and the organizer has booked the dinner for 10 people with a set menu. There are currently 11 attendees, excluding my girlfriend and me. If we went, this would make it way over capacity. Now we really aren't sure if we should go, because what if we turn up, and there is no room? This makes it slightly more awkward, as we may not be able to just pull up a chair and join. The dinner is tomorrow also. Thanks for all the kind messages as well. I will definitely give an update after everything plays out. Relevant comments. Start a group chat with just your close friends to see what's up. My girlfriend messaged one of our mutual friends and explained the situation, and our mutual friend was gobsmacked. She didn't read the chat thoroughly and assumed it was a surprise party for both of us. Our mutual friend was really angry and said she was sick of this girl's, the organizer's drama, but I think she is still attending. She said she would speak up if we decided not to go and someone questioned my partners and my absence. Why aren't you all as close anymore? It was a natural distance, but they can be a bit problematic at times, causing unnecessary drama, etc. So myself and my friends just distanced ourselves a little bit. But my brother remained quite close even so, which is fine. I am close to these people, just not so much the organizer. She and I are still good friends, but she is closer to my brother. The problem is that she has invited my brothers and my best friends. Which feels strange. Are you certain they aren't planning a separate thing for you? 100% certain. Do you have plans with your brother? My brother and I see each other almost every day as we are in business together. He is completely unaware this is going on. So he's not at fault. I know he will be upset if he knows I wasn't included. We both talked about how we didn't want to do anything for our birthday this year. OP is voted NTA. Update. Hey, sorry guys. I know you have all been wanting an update, but I felt like I really had to sit with my feelings for a few days and really think about the nuisances of the situation. I also want to thank you all for your supportive comments. They made me feel like I wasn't going crazy. There've been a lot of common questions, so I'll try to answer those first. Could this be a secret surprise for me too? No, definitely not. I was added to the group chat with all the other guests and was given instructions on when to be there and when we would all surprise my brother. Also, this girl is not that thoughtful, haha. And if it was a secret surprise, my partner would have known and wouldn't have just let me suffer in silence. Does this girl have a crush on my brother? I was actually impressed by people's intuition. It's not really a straightforward crush. She's been hot and cold with him, but they aren't together. 
I do think that she tries hard to be the most important girlfriend in his life, though. So I think her organizing this surprise dinner is her way of further trying to achieve that status. So you guys were spot on. To the few who said that I need to get out of my feelings and go, I would have had absolutely no problem at all if they wanted to do something with just my brother alone. If they had just left it to their girl group to celebrate him and left me out of it. I respect that they are closer to my brother, and I would have been happy for him. The problem arises when I'm invited as a bystander and my partner, and some of my best friends are invited too, completely disregarding the fact that it's my birthday too. That's what made me feel shy. Why haven't some of my closest friends who were invited said anything? I got a call from a friend the day of the dinner, and he said he spoke with our other close friend, and they agreed that it was extremely rude and a strange thing to do. I asked him why none of them spoke up on my behalf, and he just apologized and said he didn't have any excuses for it. They still ended up going to the dinner. My other close friend rang up the day, and she said that she was not attending because it didn't feel right to do so. Then this close friend ended up texting one of the girls from that group, explaining why she wouldn't be there. The girl then responded with excuses, and said it wasn't that big of a deal. So, I spoke to my other close friends who are also twins they weren't invited to the dinner, and just asked them how they would feel if they were in this situation. They pretty much said what the majority of you all said. They were so angry on my behalf, and said that it was extremely messed up, and that they wouldn't go if this was them. They then created new dinner plans with myself, my girlfriend, my brother, and our closest friends so that we could do a new celebration after our birthday instead. I didn't go to the dinner. It was two nights ago, so my girlfriend and I went to see a movie instead. We figured if we took the radio silent route, our absence would hopefully speak for itself. I was really considering saying something in that chat, but I was also not wanting them to paint me as aggressive. I was also considering calling my brother the morning of and ruining the surprise because I wanted to let him know what was going on and just talk to him. But at the same time, I felt like an arsey hole doing that to him. I wanted him to have his moment too. So I decided to wait until the day after the dinner to say something. I spoke to my brother yesterday and showed him the post, and he recognized that it was very rude and stupid of her and said it felt weird for him too. He explained that he had nothing to do with it, which of course I already knew, and I let him know that I never blamed him for it at all. He said that at the dinner, the organizer said that she invited me and my partner, but that we just didn't come, so he wasn't actually aware that I was invited only as a guest until afterwards. But he hasn't said anything to her yet. I'm not sure if he will mention something to her later or not. The organizer hasn't said anything to me either, but I don't really care about hearing from her anyway. Yesterday, both me and my brother went to the new celebration dinner together, which was really nice, and we both had a really good time. So, really, this whole thing just highlights who my actual friends are. Relevant comments. People say OP is a better person than them, because they would have said something to the organizer. Yeah, I thought about maybe saying something next time I am around her. But then again, I can't see her taking any genuine accountability, as I've also heard they have already regarded it as no big deal. I think it might make me feel worse to be gaslit, haha. Uh -huh. But I know within myself, and that many others think it was wrong of her. So if she doesn't want to admit that, then that's fine with me. Someone says they're disappointed that the brother is still friends with some of those people. Well, he's read the post and the comments on it. So hopefully he can come to his own realizations about it. As I didn't want to impose my own opinion on him. As I think it is hard to acknowledge that one of his closest friends could do something or be like that. I think it's also hard when he has them downplaying the situation too. Yeah, I do understand what you're saying, and I do feel let down in that sense. I mean, ideally, I want that. But for him to see her true colors, I'm just not sure that's the case. I think it's complicated for him. I'm not excusing it, but all I can really say right now is that I hope he comes to a realization on his own about the company he keeps. The future. For sure. I will definitely let you guys know if anything else happens further along the line. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.